Hello, good morning, afternoon, it's afternoon. I'm having kind of a hard time at getting motivated to do anything. Last night at our household was kind of a crazy night. Um, long story short, we semi adopted a new cat. And I already have two cats, they are strictly indoor cats. They're my children, I love them very much. But when Johnny got home last night, I heard him coming in and he wasn't like entering the house. So I went to go see what was up. I'm like, oh my God, did he like slip and fall and bump his head? What's going on? And as I got closer to the garage door, he's like screaming, don't open the door, don't open the door. I'm like, what is like someone waiting out there for us? So I need to get my baseball bat, like what is going on? And he's like, there's a cat in the garage. And I freaked out thinking it was one of our cats that got out, but no, that's not the case. There was just a big, fat, juicy, gray cat who I hadn't seen before. I think I've heard him before at night, actually, um, but I hadn't seen him before. And now he is a garage cat. I was feeling very emotional. I am a huge animal lover. I wanted to bring the cat inside and give him a warm home and snuggle on him and show him that he's loved. But I don't know if the cat has any diseases that can be transferred to my cats. Uh, and I just know the responsible thing really for us and for our house and for our cats and for this extra cat was to kind of keep him outside and give him shelter in the garage. So there's a litter box in there, there's food and water and a big old fat cat in there now. The cat is a super smart cat though, because at 3.52 in the morning, I heard our alarm like counting down before the sirens started going off. And then the siren started going off before I was able to turn it off. Well, Garage Cat opened the door and came into our home. It was a very quick process. By the time we realized there was no intruder, it was just the cat. And we opened the garage door again to look for the cat. He ran back outside, down the stairs, into the garage. I mean, look at that face. How could I not fall? instantly in love with this cat. And he's so sweet. He rubs his head on me. I crouched down to his level. He came right over to me. I pet him behind his ears. He was purring. He's just so loving and I'm already attached. I've named him. He's my family. No matter what happens to him, he's my third child. If you're curious about his name, it's ridiculous. I understand this. I am well aware. I picked probably the worst name ever for a cat. I have two cats, their names are Logan and Lola. I wanted to stick with the L theme. Also, this cat is fat. He's not starving, he's not struggling to get fed. So before I saw that he was a boy, I named him Luscious. <laughs> Cause he's just big and plump and luscious, he's so cute. Um, and then I was thinking of the movie Hocus Pocus and that cat's name is Thaddeus, right? Thaddeus Binks or something. <laughs> So he is Luscious Thaddeus and my new married last name since he's a part of our family. So the cat has a ridiculous name. Maybe that's going to be enough for him to want to leave my garage and become a street cat again. I don't know. But in the meantime, I love Luscious. So it was a very eventful evening in this household. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with the cat yet. If he's used to being outside and that's where he's happy being, obviously I want what's best for the cat but I'm a paranoid person. I hate seeing animals outside. I think about just like everything in nature that could attack this guy or it's busy. Like we live in the city, there are cars everywhere. I don't want him to get hit by a car. So we're trying to decide what the best, safest, most humane and loving thing to do is with this cat. Anyway, uh, long story short, that's not what this video is about. I'm here to show you how to make a natural disinfectant spray slash bed bug repellent slash something that really would have come in handy last night as I had my hands all over this cat and I don't know where this cat has been. I've talked about this spray that I use and the reasons why I use it in two videos now. Uh, the first one was Hotel Do's and Don'ts and the second one was Hotel Living that recently came out. Uh, but I recently got a comment from one of my followers. Let me check her name. Summer Stein, and she said it was a great idea to be using it. She does the same thing. However, when she's making her little spray jars that she takes with her to travel, she's using vodka and essential oils. So you can really stop the video now if you're wondering what the recipe is. 
that's the recipe. Um, but I'm just gonna walk you through like how I make it, what kind of jars I put it in, and the purpose of me using it. This is just a small storage container that I use to hold supplies that I need when I am making things with essential oils. Uh, so I have a spray bottle, it's glass. One thing about essential oils is you're not supposed to put them into plastic. Uh, and another thing is they're not supposed to get too hot or too cold or have direct sunlight. So I have tinted glass jars with a spray cap and I have one of these guys to um, siphon out the oil. And I don't know, I just have like a bunch of different things in here. I have roller balls that we're not gonna be using today. Maybe I can open them. Um, so yeah, just like everything that I need to make the oils kind of is stored in one spot. And then the ingredients for my sprays today, I have small cheap vodka and peppermint oil. This one I got from Whole Foods. It's fine. Normally I use the doTERRA brand. I don't know if there's really a difference between all of these oils, but we were in a pinch. We just picked it up at Whole Foods one day and uh, I have the vodka right here. I'm subbing out using water in this recipe. Um, water is just like the diluter. It helps your oils go further. But in using vodka, it's a natural disinfectant. So you can spray it on your hands. You can spray it on your belongings. It's not gonna ruin like the material of your clothes. If you're spraying it all through a hotel, it's not gonna damage anything in the hotel while you're in there disinfecting. Due to the alcohol content in the vodka, it also evaporates very quickly. So you can kind of spray it all over everything. You don't really have to worry about wiping it down. Just spray it and let the vodka do its thing. Also online, I had read that vodka kills odor producing bacteria. So if you got the pit thing going on where you're a little bit stinky or you have like shoes that are smelling a little funky, you can spray it in there and it should kill all of those smells too. So what I am using this new spray bottle for in my personal travels is to disinfect my suitcase and also keep bed bugs away from my suitcase. So not to re-talk about what I've covered in past videos, uh, but just a very quick synopsis. I worry about other people's luggage touching my luggage. And if there are bugs in their luggage, I don't want them to come to my luggage. So I spray my bags as I'm leaving the hotel with this mixture before I get on an airplane. This way, if my bag is touching someone else's bag, the chance of a transfer is lessened. You can also unzip your suitcase, spray it on the inside. Again, it's not gonna damage any of your contents. You could spray it on your beds in the hotel before you go to bed also. So it's multi-purpose, it's all natural, it's good for everything, and it kills the gross stuff. And it's not killing the bed bugs, but the smell is preventing the bed bugs from coming closer to your things, which is always good because if you're gonna be exposed, you wanna protect yourself as much as you can. All right, so let's make the easiest thing in the world, but the best thing to have on hand to make. So open up this little blue bottle and take out the little spritzer. And then you just pour in your vodka. I'll show you. People like that step-by-step -step kind of thing. So we're going with the entire ounce, or is this two ounces? Whatever it is, I just have an entire mini in there. And then I have my peppermint oil with a childproof lid. Oh my God, how do you open this thing? This is so embarrassing. I can't get the freaking thing opened. Oh my God. There we go. All right, open your peppermint oil or have somebody else open the peppermint oil for you. Sometimes it's a challenge. And I add 10 drops of this into this. This is a slow pour. All right. There's a few more than 10 drops, but that's okay, I enjoy the scent of peppermint. And there you go. Before I use it, I always give it a quick little shake just to make sure everything is incorporated. And I do the test spray, show you, to make sure it's working. And there you have it. A refreshing smelling, all natural, disinfectant slash bed bug preventer. 
Just a little quick lesson, a quick tip for you today. Hopefully this is something that you enjoyed. If you guys do enjoy quick tips, maybe I could make this a thing. If you do have anything to share with me, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. I'm gonna go add that to my suitcase now and I have a few things I need to do and a few lost cat posters to make because if anyone wants to claim this cat, they're certainly welcome to. If they don't want to, I'm more than happy to take care of it. So I'll keep you guys posted on the cat thing. Otherwise, just a quick video today. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns, post them down below for me. Please do make sure that you like this video and subscribe to my channel. It would mean a ton to me. I have another cat to support. I need all the help I can get. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate it and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks again.